Me kudo went man. Kudo bada to some uh, who's looking at in another country as far as Africa. When man is afternoon, by die is evening. Uh, we are Hosu Agelo by Ghana, Bobby the First. The Ganlodo Hosu are the supreme monarch of the monarchy of Ganlodo, the Maroon monarchy of Ganlodo. Uh, we want to hit you with this quick public service announcement of sorts. Uh, and please excuse us if you hear a little sniffling. Pollen season is very bad where I am. Uh, uh, from what we understand, it's very bad. Many extraordinary activity of pollen is going on this year. We, we shouldn't say bad because it's still Mother Nature. But then again, the pollen is increasing like that because of the actions of those that that appear to be seeking the destruction of the of the uh, environment. But that's another subject. Um, uh, well, we want to get right into this. Um, during this time of panic and people uh, trying to protect themselves um, from this COVID virus, so-called coronavirus, we want to, and definitely should say safe, um, keep the distances and all of that. Uh, especially because of this virus that white people have, have brought over here. It's, that's just a fact. We said in another video, further you stay away from them, the better you're off anyway. But people don't seem to listen. Now we had black people who've even died from the COVID, uh, COVID virus. And that is unfortunate for them and their family. But we want to take this time in light of that in light of the COVID epidemic, to remind people of a major epidemic that has taken out way more African people um, over the past hundred years than they had been taken out thousands of years before that. At least since the 1800s when it really started to kick in, mid-1800s. And we call this MSS or MSSD, Mental Slavery Syndrome, or Mental Slavery Syndrome Disease. Take your pick. So we, we, put, we put some notes down here. Kind of makes us think about these commercials where they talk about symptoms. So we want to talk tell you symptoms because people sit, team to, seem to forget history real quick. Uh, so some symptoms are of MSS, Mental Slavery Sli Syndrome, is addiction to things non-African, including religions such as Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, Baha'i faith, any and any version of them. Uh, non-African mates, non-African fashions and ways of life. And often have an aversion to African ways of life. Another symptom is propensity to feel compelled to attend non-African religious and cultural events. Cultural, such, such as St. Patrick's Day. That's the thing that black people seem to literally be trying to take over at this time. And often be anti or, anti or lukewarm towards things African. So this is, once again, MSS, or mental slavery syndrome, or MSSD, mental slavery syndrome disease. A feeling a little to no connection with Africa or its various unified philosophies. Going through a mental guilt withdrawal if they miss church, mosque, synagogue, masjid, whatever you want to call it, Buddhist temple, Hindu temple, katawakata. Katawakata is kibantu or so-called Swahili for etc. etc. The fallout of this with, uh, withdrawal is fear of a mythological hell, not getting your spiritual leader's approval or the church's approval or the mosque approval, katawakata. Another one is uncanny ability to get along with non-Africans over your own people. Or a preference to be around them instead of your own people. Just go downtown some of these places and you'll see. Blonde, another one, blonde, green, blue, katawakata hair color, especially when you wait to your mid-40s to your mid-50s to do it. Because self-hate self -hate, tends to increase in time. This is something 
Once again, it's a public service announcement. A lot of my people may not have noticed this. Or you can have an epiphany and wake up and realize you're an African. Deep-seated thoughts that your life would be better if you were white. There are some people that may be watching this video. They're not going to admit that. But if we were around them or knew them personally, they, they, we probably could probably would tell you, yeah, yeah, that applies to them. You know, Not supporting or trusting African businesses, so-called black businesses. Trying to reverse the tide by saying that the biblical characters, bi biblical based religious character, when we say biblical based, we're talking about anything that's based on Judaism. So that includes Christianity, Islam, Judaism, of course, and any variation thereof of those religions. So reversing the tide by saying the biblical characters were actually black. This is mental uh, slavery syndrome. Feeling a need to change white people or even thinking you can through religious appeal, political appeal, whatever, being part of some organization that they're part of or being part of a black organization that's supposed to be for that reason. It's really comical. I hate to, you know, not laughing at anybody that is sincere about their people, but then, but, you know, they still feel like we can show white people another way. Like, no, show your people. Work on your house. Feeling you can defeat your enemy while engulfed in their religious ideologies. Well, religions and ideologies. You know, so they have their religions. Then they have ideologies that's maybe not based on their religion. Like atheism is an ideology for them. Communism is an socialism ideology for them. Um, another is having this unrealistic ecumenical view of the world, universalistic view of the world, when it actually the world does not view you like that. So, a preference for light skin over dark skin amongst your own. Calling light skin African women red bones. When in fact a red bone is a term that came about in the early 20th century in relation to uh, a reddish, like a brownish, but more reddish hunting dog. This is what you're calling your women when you call them a red bone. You're calling them not only a dog, but it by, by inference, the female dog, which is a bitch, which would, would apply more to white women. Referring to your women as broads, B-R-O-A-D, not having any clue where that comes from and give you a real brief history. This term comes from in the mid 1800s, white folks, of course, this term comes from white folks again. And there was a wall, Wall Street gets his name because there was a wall that separated the goody side, the money side of Wall Street from the side where the hookers used to hang out. That was Broad Street. So the hookers will call, they will say, I'm going to go get me a broad. That was a, a cold term. Of course, over time, everybody knew what that term meant. But they thought well into the 1900s that well, I'm going to get me a broad. Early 1900s anyway. Get me a broad they, that, you know, people didn't know what they were talking about. These were white men referring to their women as their hooker women, their slut women as broads. Black men, when you're calling your women broads, it's not, overstand the power of language. The power of even a dialect. English is a dialect. It's not really a language, but still, you're saying this out of your mouth. You're calling your woman a hooker. Not even intending to do so. And then when told better, you still keep doing it. Now you, now you become the enemy. So, let's see. And the last one here for this installment, uh, we will come with another um, uh, installment of, the, of this uh, MSS or MSSD. Refer to your people as niggas. That should be self-explanatory. You no, know, it don't come from niggas. Niggas. Uh, N-E-G-U-S. No. White folks, white folks that was taking you into captivity, 
keeping you in a captivity that created that term over here, didn't knew nothing about that N-E-G-U-S, the kings of Ethiopia. They knew nothing about that. So, so the solution, or let's say part of the solution to MSS, and this is a very short version and we'll get out of here for, uh, on this. Uh, try the re-Africanization diet. You know how a lot of the uh, commercials have uh, all these lists of these symptoms and then they, they have their, you know, have a product that they're trying to sell. We don't have a product we're trying to sell. We're trying to sell you back to yourself. Try the re-Africanization diet, which includes the African, uh, uh, re-Africanizing your way of life and retrieving the ancestral soul of your lineage. It includes immersing yourself in the study of the ways of your pre-MSSD ancestors, dating back thousands of years before all of this started. All it'll cost you to do is some research and divesting yourself of a European mindset. We can be reached at Ikabo Kilombo at Gmail. That is E K A A B O K I L O M B O at Gmail.com. Website restorationhealing.com. Restorationhealing.com. That's our um, publications and our uh, the, uh, website, the new website to the monarchy is newafricanvodun.com. That is new African spelled with the K. Vodun spelled V O D as in dog U N dot com. Odipa.